what film were you surprised about? Like, okay, so if there's a film to recommend for us to watch right now, you would pick your film of 1982 for for geeks right. that, that that maybe people didn't know, but still holds up well. What do you? What? Mm. Would, or where would you? What, that's a that's a really good question, and you know it's funny because they do say like you know at the end we, at the end we we talk to a bunch of people about like what they think the best movie of 82 was, and. You know, my answer, it's going to bore you, is The Verdict. I, I thought The Verdict was the best movie of 82. Uh, I, I just love that movie. Sidney Lumet I, I, you know, directed it. I think it's really, you know, brilliantly written by David Mamet. And, you know, Paul Newman's so great in it. But, you know, if we're going to go with the geek stuff, well, I, I, I know that's really what you're asking. Um, you know, Star Trek Two is such a boring answer, you know, Um I I, I I feel like maybe I would say Poltergeist because it's a horror movie that actually is about the characters and not just about what happens to the family. And it's so brilliantly executed, but man, genre, man, that it's, it's, uh, okay. I mean, you know, I, I maybe fast times, maybe fast times. I just, it's such a smart movie. Amy Herkeling. I, it's, it's, Oh, you know what? I'm going to pick Diner. I'll pick Diner. How about that? <laughs> there I'm going go. with Diner. All there right. you go. Very good. Yeah. I, I love Diner. Yeah. I mean, I live that. You know, we all live that. I mean, you know, in, in my my 20s, you know, and, and 30s, I mean, that was it. Going, you know, you, you're going to finish those fries and talking about what we talked about, movies, music, and, you know, girls and all that kind of stuff. Sports. And, um, and uh, you know, and, and, more, and more French fries. So it was like... Uh, <laughs> I, I relate to Diner. I love Diner. It was a huge influence. It's funny. Two movies from this year were huge influences on my first movie. When I did Free Enterprise, Diner and My Favorite Year were um, enormous influences on, on Free Enterprise. Because when we went to Shatner to do Free Enterprise and it said to him, um, you know, that we wanted Bill to play this sort of, it was played against him, this fictional version of Captain Kirk that the guys would get wise pearls from. And, you know, he would be like, they conjure up this vision of Shatner. And he said, no, I don't want to, play this guy with all the answers i'm a messed up guy i want to play a screwed up guy and so we look to my favorite year as sort of the paradigm which is you know these guys look up to somebody and that he looks up to the peter o'toole character and it turns out he has feet of clay and that's what we did with shatner and that was the way into breaking free enterprise and making that work not just for us but for shatner so my favorite year also is a movie that actually means you know a great deal to me personally as well as in a movie you know because it really paved the way for my first movie. My whole career is built on the back of you know the free enterprise, and so in that sense, it's built on the back of my favorite year. There you, oh, that's a good. There's a double feature. We can show show that the Beverly. <laughs> it, that would be a great <laughs> double feature for the Cinematheque. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, I oh, like it. It's I, a good I, plan. Okay, let's make it happen, man. <laughs> well, I do want to do an eighty-two film festival too. You know, um, once the 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 uh, once the um, the the show debuts on the CW, because you know, I I just can't believe. I mean, it's like I've been living with this thing now for a couple of years, and you know, now in July, in July eighth, and and it's going to be repeated on July eleventh. It's going to be the whole world is going to see it, and it's crazy because you know we're finally letting it out to the world and you know it's always very exciting to see you know what what people think and hopefully you know they'll love the first episode and and want to stick through it for, through, you know for the rest of the month because obviously if it's successful i think um there's more to do here you know there are other years which are if not as good you know equally good um to investigate and i i think we have a format that really lends itself that you know makes it compelling because like I said, you don't want to feel like DVD bonus features. And I think we figured out a way to like, you know, even if you're not a huge movie fan, like it's interesting. That, that, that's the biggest compliment I, you know, I've received from people. It's like people who aren't necessarily huge um, movie fans. They say, but you know, I grew up in that era or I envied people who grew up in that era. And I just found the documentary, you know, the series ultimate, you know, so compelling. And we, we premiered it in Spain at a big genre film festival in Spain. And I'm like, are they even going to get it? Half these movies didn't open under Franco. You know, are they going to, you know, and, and they went crazy for it. You know, the mega force of it all and stuff. And I was surprised, like things I thought would never play in Spain, like Diner, 
they, they just went crazy. I mean, I knew Conan would visit shot in Spain, right? But like, so all this stuff and it was so well received. So that was sort of when we knew because, you know, it's always nerve wracking the first time you show something to anybody because you can really believe in it and you trust your instincts, but then you share it with an audience and they tell you, you you're on glue. You have no idea what you're talking about. So when we first showed it for the first time in Spain and then people went crazy for it, it was like very gratifying. So like now we have that again because when it premieres on TV in July, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, well, hopefully people are going to like this. You know, there'll be that one guy on Twitter who doesn't, but hopefully everybody else <laughs> thinks it's awesome. It's, yeah, you know. it's always that guy. All right. So here's your opportunity. Go where uh, is it streaming? Do we have to watch it at a certain time? What? What? Well, so so on a uh, Grace Geek Year Ever 1982, it premieres on the CW on Saturday, July 8th at 8 p.m. And it's going to be a special encore presentation. I like saying that special encore presentation on Tuesday, July 11th. But if you miss it uh, live, you can still watch it on the CW app. It'll be available on the CW app. And uh, so however you watch it, watch it. You know, there's these great, all these great opportunities. You can watch it on July 8th. You can watch it on July 11th. You can watch it on uh, on the app and uh, and and just either, however you, you know, watch it and then just stick with it. It'll be all, all summer long and you can relive, uh, you can party like it's 1982, just <laughs> like Prince, except that, that was 1999. But yeah. this is 1982 and you can be just like Prince. Uh, how many parts is it? It's four parts. So uh, part one is the summer of Spielberg. We deal with E.T. and Poltergeist. Second week is sci-fi where we do do a deep dive into like Blade Runner and Star Trek 2 and some other things. And uh, like Megaforce. And uh, part three is fantasy. We have some amazing stuff in fantasy. We have these outtakes of Orson Welles doing the trailers uh, to for Conan, which is just amazing. If you're an Orson Welles fan, you're you're gonna love that. And um, action films, well, all this great stuff on First Blood and Firefox that people have never seen. And uh, we wrap it all up with then the loser is, which is all about uh, the Oscars that year. And uh, we deal with comedy and horror films. And uh, it's just. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think it's riveting. How's that? I just like I can quote myself in the ads. There you go. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> riveting. Says 